You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, oh, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Newsroom After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Newsroom After Show. Hi, everyone. Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another after show for the fabulous newsroom. We are in a season one, episode eight, and this is the blackout part one tragedy porn. Uh, my name is Kelly, and joining me today are... Kendra Cavasso. <laughs> it's the two of us, but we have uh, Kristen on the line with us. Hey, guys. And unfortunately, Sarah wasn't able to make it tonight, so, you know, we'll miss her, but she'll be back next week. So... I love the title of this episode. I think it's funny. Yeah, I was <laughs> kind of confused before we saw the episode, yeah. you know. But, yeah, it, it keeps you watching, right? So it starts That's out. Right, yeah. they talk about, you know, Casey Anthony and yeah. Nancy Wiener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we've got, like, the ex-boyfriend that's back in the action. Brian Brenner. Bri yeah, so Will invites Brian back to, you know, he has... Uh, New York Magazine wants to do a piece on him, and he gets to pick the writer. And he, uh, we find out that uh, you know Mackenzie's ex boyfriend Brian is a journalist, yes. so he brings him back and makes is making him go through this whole audition process. Right, and it's just it's really kind of crappy <laughs> to have this. You know, this is the guy that Mackenzie cheated on Will with, who we find out that he seems to have a different version in his mind. Mm -hmm. He's thinking that. She they were together. On him with Will. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But his definition of together is that he calls Mackenzie late at night and she comes over and has a little fun with him. It's like, the booty call. Right. Yeah. So from there back and forth, then, I mean, did you guys get the impression that obviously this was happening for a while? Did we know that she had repeatedly cheated with him? Or did we just find that out tonight? I think we just found that out tonight. Because right. right? I was always under the impression it was like one time. A slip up, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought she said at one point, like, it was it was just one guy, but for a small period of time. Oh, That's okay. That's what I thought it was. Okay. Maybe I just, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, but no, but the, we, I mean, he, they say, you know, she, it was obviously more than once. And yeah. So, it you know. Worse. Yeah. Well, yeah. this whole thing is... Considering the fact that, you know, Will and Mackenzie work together and then he brings in the ex-boyfriend mm -hmm. to basically, you know, kind of torment her. He could have chosen anyone <laughs> and he brings this guy. Well, it was the two sides, right? He was, you know, ultra qualified, but at the same time, mm -hmm. oh, let me have some fun with this. Right, right because he, th you know, he knows the guy's situation and he was a big top dog and now he's yeah. kind of you know, just writing Podcaster. a blog. <laughs> He's a broadcaster <laughs> like we are. What's wrong with that? <laughs> so he wants, you know, he needs a cover story to get back on top. So Will knows he has a certain amount of power over him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he likes. Yeah. Is he still not, and, I mean, and it's evident, he's still not forgiving her for what she did. Right. It's more just like twisting, you know. Mm -hmm. just The dagger. Yeah. yeah. Well, we found out he's holding his hand over the flame. Yeah, because right. he, you know, bursts in on his, his therapist. <laughs> yeah. He makes another surprise visit to, you know, for therapy. And, yeah, intrudes on someone else's session. <laughs> well, that's so what he does. Um, it's, yeah. it's all that about him. That was really funny, though. I liked when Lonnie, you know, was like, is this guy being a pain? He's like, yes, he's a pain. He goes, no, or that you're in pain. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, yes, he is. So he didn't ask if I was a pain. He yeah. asked if I was in pain. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> no, and I think it's, you know, and I think that, the, you know, the therapist pointed it out to him that, you know, it's all about forgiving. You have to forgive her, mm -hmm. you know, in order to move forward. Yeah, in order yeah. to move on. You can, it's not he's thinking, OK, if I just get through this, I'll be good. Mm -hmm. No, you have to 
You have to forgive yeah. her. You can't keep tormenting her. Right. And he knows yeah. that he's hurting her. I really her. liked the therapist, too. His insight with Mackenzie, he said to, her, um, to Will, while you're working your way through this, you're hurting Mackenzie. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Will completely grasp how much he's hurting Mackenzie doing this. I think he wants a little bit. But he still cares about her. You don't want to see somebody that you care about in pain no matter what. Right. And he knows that he is. Because he needs to he needs to just let it go because after this situation, if he gets through it, there's gonna be another situation and mm-hmm. you know, and so forth. So I think um well it doesn't help that they work together. <laughs> yeah. That's always gonna be a problem. But but yeah, I think getting that new perspective, hopefully we'll see a new a new change again. And, yeah. yeah. Well, he needs to really deal with it. And I, that's yeah. the thing that I don't think he's done. Mm-hmm. He keeps, you know, pushing it to the forefront and showing that he's still ridiculously hurt mm-hmm. over this. Yeah. That's why he's doing these things, but he doesn't really want to just, you know, accept it and deal with it for what it was. And because I mean, it's painful. Mm-hmm. And I so. think it's becoming increasingly so. I don't know if you guys noticed the um, increased use of cigarettes in yes. this episode. <laughs> yes. It was like, he was, you know, fishing for them this time. And mm-hmm. it feels like that's kind of, you know, in line with his anxiety getting a little bit mm-hmm. more and more. I don't know what you guys thought. Yeah, he's getting obviously more and more stressed out about everything because he was definitely chain smoking. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was like trying to, I was feeling it in, yeah. in our room. Because <laughs> I think it's, you know, a little bit of everything, you know, everything that he's having to deal with just, you know, to keep his job and then all of this extra stuff with Mackenzie. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's just a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. And we already know he doesn't deal with things you know, very well. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it looks like Brian still has a thing for Mackenzie, though. It seems that yeah, he's still he definitely well, Mac- Mackenzie's adorable, and mm-hmm. I think it's she's very charismatic. And for both, you know, loves in her life, I don't think either one of them obviously have ever stopped loving her. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely gonna the next couple of episodes that are gonna come up. That that's gonna be a problem. Yeah. I, that's going to be interesting because it seems, you know, he keeps pointing things out to her, even at the end of this episode where he said, you know, say what you want about me, but I would not have put myself here. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have done that to you. Mm-hmm. You know, think about that. But then he still showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he needs the job, <laughs> no, but, you know, know, at least it wasn't his idea. But if, he was, you know, <laughs> if he's trying to be all you know, chivalrous, mm-hmm. he could. Do he you think he also comes in there trying to win, win her back? I mean, there's that sense of hope that, well, maybe if I'm here and I have feelings for her and she sees me and she's obviously still not with Will, mm-hmm. you know, that there's a chance for me. Yeah, it does. I've been dumb and dumber to kind of go back to the end. You know, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah. There's a chance for him. <laughs> Yeah, that ego. You know, it could be, you know, we want, you know, there was obviously he knows what the situation is. So when, you know, this opportunity came up about for him, there was definitely he has his own ulterior motives, I Mm -hmm. think. And I think that's what we're going to see in the, you know, the next two episodes, at least. Yeah. The last two. The last two. There's only two more left. (laughs) Oh, Oh, exactly. I I know. know. It's strange. Oh, my gosh. So that's, you know, a new little twist on this whole love, you know, the love triangles that we keep getting from this show. And there was a lot of focus on that. And, you know, I you know, he kind of figured it out, too. You know, the whole point of him being there, aside from all of this, you know, lovesick Mm -hmm. tragedy stuff is, you know, Will wants a feature done and he wants, you know, the truth to come out about what they're doing. But he does. He wants him to kind of find it out. Right. He doesn't want to give him too much. Mm -hmm. So he basically figures out what's going on that, you know, you know, that they're trying to, you know, place all these stories and find a reason to fire Will because he's not doing what, you know, what they want him to for their, you know, for their advertisers. They're messing, messing with the money. Yeah. Can't do that. All right. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I wonder if it's really going to get, you know, uncovered and all of that. If it's, you know. It's tough because they keep, you know, some of it's off the record, some's on, mm-hmm. and some is, you know, insinuated. Yeah. So. Well, right now, because it's his trial or his audition, yeah. everything's off the record right. that he's gathering. All this information is off the record right now. Even though, well, but yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel like he's not necessarily listening to that. No, no. I think he's, you know, he has to take it in and figure out how he's going to structure the story. I mean, and that's a pretty, you know, as a journalist, too, Mm -hmm. you know, to have somebody dictate what you can and cannot say, Mm -hmm. what what you can and cannot put in your story. You know, it's a little bit of a, you know, a dig at him. Yeah. But he's obviously he knows that, unfortunately, they're in this situation where they kind of need each other. Yeah. Because Will needs the control and he needs the story. Mm hmm. 
So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see how that <laughs> plays out. That's going to be interesting. I know. Well, he could take. I, I, I know we talked about this earlier about how Sorkin writes every kind of personality trait where they could have written Ryan Brenner as somebody that you don't like because you don't want to like the person that Mackenzie cheated on Will with. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel that watching him. I didn't really, you know, fall for the character, but I didn't hate him. I didn't all. either. I kind of liked about him. You guys? Yeah, I was I was neutral. Yeah, no, I kind of <laughs> liked him. And, you know, and after he said, oh, wait a minute, you cheated on me with Will. I think that I felt, you know, a little bit bad that she was kind of giving mixed things mm-hmm. because, you know, I think that it is goes a little deeper for him. You know, they were yeah. together for however long they were together. And then, you know, what well, was like a year or something? Yeah. And then. Well, she was. She was seeing him, then she was with Will, I think, for a year, and then oh, right, 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 right. called her. Yeah, and but she, she went back. back. Yeah. So There's, I think she was kind of misleading a little bit, and mm-hmm. you know, it was a little bit deeper for him, I think. And yeah, so I think that's how mm-hmm. his perspective was. Oh, mm-hmm. you cheated on me with Will, mm-hmm. you know, because technically they were still in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what he considers to be together. Probationary <laughs> period. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I felt a little bit bad for him that maybe you know she kind of was you know having her cake and eating it too and Mm -hmm. at the expense of both of these guys you know as she's trying to figure out i mean not the guys don't usually guys aren't you know they're the ones that are usually doing that kind of thing but (laughs) you know it doesn't make it any you know but i think that she was in her you know road to self-discovery and figuring out where she wanted to go and Mm -hmm. you know balancing that whole career and love that's you know having to figure it out you know, how am I going to feel if I go and do this? What if this is the right thing? And, mm-hmm. you know, all of that, you know, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't condone cheating, but, you know, sometimes you know, don't necessarily make the best choices when you're trying to figure, you know, find Fair yourself enough. or figure out what your next move is. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs self-help and therapy <laughs> and relationships, you know, relationship therapy. We talk about that all the time. Yeah. So they need to go to Amazon.com and get some self-help books. <laughs> But how can they do that? Uh, they can actually <laughs> go to AfterBuzzTV.com and click at the on our Amazon banner at the top, and it really helps us out. You know, it's one extra click. It doesn't cost you any, you know, anything extra, and you can do all of your online shopping through Amazon from AfterBuzzTV.com, and it helps us, you know, keep the lights on and keep doing, you know, all these great shows that we get to do here. So please, when you have a second and you feel the urge to shop, make sure to go to AfterBuzzTV first and click on the Amazon banner because we appreciate it. <laughs> Have you been? I keep. I'm like. I'm a shopaholic <laughs> I now. Say, I keep on and on and on. Every week we should do ratings. I know. You know for the show and then ratings for how much you've been shopping. How much I've been spending. I know. I just spent like another like few hundred dollars. I need. Oh I, all gosh. of a sudden I want like these outside lights to turn on when I go outside my house. Oh, and the automatic. The automatic yeah, ones. Nice. Yeah. So I'm just finding ridiculous things to buy, <laughs> like pre-ordering DVDs, and it's ridiculous. I need to stop. <laughs> Well, just keep going after BuzzTV.com. Yeah, I know. This show has been brought to you by me. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So this whole global clarity thing. Yes. You know, I have always thought, you know, when you have a cell phone with Facebook, with all of these social media, you're kind of opening yourself up for this kind of monitoring and for people to have this insight mm-hmm. into your life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people, yeah. you know, all the conspiracy theorists and everybody says, you know, the government is always watching. And, you know, a lot of it plays out in a lot of movies, mm-hmm. you know, like if you, you know, like the movie Shooter and like those, you know, Advantage Point and all that where it shows like, all the cameras and everybody's being watched every yeah. second, no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. And this just kind of, you know, proves that point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Batman reference, Yeah, <laughs> you know, the machine where, you know, the Batman used to find the Joker really exists. That's a yeah. scary, scary He's thought. He's like, no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, he doesn't know about his technology. But, yeah, I mean, with GPS, with well, yeah. anything. I mean, I didn't really know about the text message thing. Um, well, I mean, everybody, I mean, they can hack into just about anything. Mm-hmm. So in the last episode... Um, we find out, you know, Charlie gets this anonymous call from someone from the NSA, Mm -hmm. you know, saying that, you know, he has like another big story for them and basically insinuating that TMI gets their stories from hacking, Mm -hmm. you know, the way news of the world did. And I remember when all of that went down, Mm -hmm. which, you know, was insane. They were tapping people's phones and doing all of this illegal stuff to get their news stories. 
And it's such an invasion of privacy. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, to even think that the government really is putting that much, you know, trying to control, you know, Americans that, you know, to be that invasive is scary. Yeah. You know, nothing is safe, no Mm -hmm. matter what you, you know, text or your phone calls. They're, you know, putting little microphones and cell phones. (laughs) And, you know, what is going on? You have to take the battery out (laughs) in order not to be traced. It's insane. (laughs) But even then, hey. Yeah, all the new technology is just kind of a map, mapping out, you know, your life and, you know, pinpointing your exact locations and, Mm -hmm. you know, all of this stuff. And it's just scary for, you know, that much information to be available to anybody. Right. You know. I yeah, that even a place like the TMI can find that and use that for their stories. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, to listening in on phone calls and uh, <laughs> it's just insane. And, you know, and he's basically says that Reese is ordering this stuff, mm-hmm. ordering the tappings and the hacking and all of that just to keep this, you know, magazine interesting with all of the stories. Yeah. And it's so wrong. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, it's a real, I mean, if that's, you know, for the storyline, if that happens to be true, you know, it's just, a, you know, even though TMI is not necessarily like a news <laughs> magazine anyway, I mean, it's right. entertainment news. We have the whole new definition of that, right. you know, in recent years, but it's also like a stab at journalists. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even have to do the legwork because, you know, let me just listen on your phone call and I can get what I need, mm-hmm. you know? I like that. <laughs> the days of digging through trash are behind us. Yeah, well, <laughs> now I it's mean, hackers. I think it still exists, though. Yeah, there but now several, it's easier. Several entertainment uh, yeah. agencies that do that. That's still so nuts. Yeah, and have people planted in different places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's but cool. now it's just expanded even more. It's mm-hmm. like you know, you don't have to be careful what you throw away. You have to be careful what you say, what you text, right. what you tweet to someone that you're that you think it's just between the two of you, but it's not. I don't know. No, everything can be exploited yeah have a shredder don't yeah (laughs) i mean (laughs) it's just it's i don't know it's just scary it's just really scary to to, you know to think that every you know i don't want to be paranoid but like (laughs) geez i know after this episode i'm like "Mm, just delete everything i've ever i know i'm I'm kidding but they're but they're (laughs) they're building a good case i mean They even with just what they have now, they could easily fire well Mm -hmm. and, you know, and it'd be justified in, you know, in that sense. And it's just really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. All these private things. I mean, granted, you know, Mackenzie did email everybody a lot of private information, (laughs) you know, on her own. They didn't really need help with that. But, you know, whatever else they're pulling up, you know, Mm -hmm. he's really kind of on that, you know, really on the fence of, you know, walking that really fine line of, you know, it could be done any day. But then, again, it's that justification. Can they justify firing? What is it? The second yeah. most popular. Watch, you know, most watched. Most watched. Yeah. yeah well, cable. with the ratings drop. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that in itself, losing half of the viewers right. is insane. Because then they'd still yeah. have to kind of climb out of that with a new anchor. Would they mm-hmm. get somebody known? Or, you know. Yeah. And the fact that they lost half and, you know, yeah, they got 150000 back. Mm-hmm. But it's still like a, you know. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. It's, yeah. And that's enough to justify getting anybody fired when, you know. Because yeah. if people are leaving and then, adver- you know, your viewers go and then your advertisers go and then there's no money for the station, right. they're not going to want to keep somebody around that's not generating profit, mm-hmm. you know. And it's just it's just a technicality. It's just a technical reason for them to get what they want. Mm-hmm. So they're just, you know, the <laughs> corporate world, scary place. <laughs> I know. It's a war zone in there. Goodness. But I don't know. I I really am, you know, Jim gets a really big task with this because the NSA um, guy, you know, meets with Charlie, gives him these transcripts that, you know, he has, you know, appealed and, you know, given testimony about this and, mm-hmm. you know, really doesn't like it. And Charlie asks him, you know, why are you decide, why do you decide to be a whistleblower now? Yeah. And, you know, he says, you know, I fought you know, the communists because of this. And I don't want to stand here and watch, you know, all of that, you know, and it's just going to happen all over again to Mm -hmm. us. It's not right. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And it's it's just, I don't know. What a smart move for him to find something that, you know, Will and Charlie need is that their news station, their news channel doesn't get shut down is, you know, you have to tell the world about, you know, data mining or global clarity. Um, and then I'll give you information on TMI so that they stop 
you know, attacking you as well. Yeah. It's, it's a very good business strategy mm-hmm. on, on his part. Too. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're getting this out into the open and then also saving, you know, a bunch of people's jobs and a reputation mm-hmm. as well. That, that was a very good uh, business business deal he did there, too. Yeah, I mean, he has to take care of himself, and then in return, I'll give you what you need to take care of you. Mm-hmm. So There's a lot of bargaining in this entire episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there definitely was. A lot of wheeling and dealing. And uh, but I like when Charlie goes to meet him, and he goes to the guy with the carnation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I just love his character so much. He's so funny. Yeah. But you know, because you see everything in the movies, you would assume somebody with a flower (laughs) would be a part of that. Is dinner ready? (laughs) That'll make for a good story. I know. And the guy is like, Did I say anything about a carnation? He's like, No, but you know, I just figured. (laughs) (laughs) That was good. That's too funny. But you know, even when Charlie goes to Leona and you know and says, "You really want, you really don't want to do this. You need to stop doing this," and she's still standing her ground and saying, mm-hmm. "No, I really don't, but I have to." Mm-hmm. You know, I already told you guys to tone it down, and you're not. So, mm-hmm. you know, tell I think like we should tell Will he's what one point one ratings oh, point right. away, one tabloid story, and one ratings point away from having his own podcast. podcast. I know. Why? Why wow. you gotta? Why you gotta diss the podcast? <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. We're fine. Maybe you can link it to um, Brian's blog. Blog, yes. Work together that way. There yeah. you go. And they can build their own, you know, having to post no. type. And he, you know. he'd bring his viewers to his podcast. Yeah. You know, worse, so, you know, stranger things, things have happened. happened. <laughs> exactly. Know? So I don't know. It's just, it's really crazy. And, you know, with all this new technology and, you know, the way the government kind of does want to be in everybody's lives and, mm-hmm. you know, with vote, you know, voting and, you know, all of this stuff, you know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it past that, you know, that they really do tap in as much as you yeah. know people accuse them of and all these conspiracy theories and all of that yeah scary stuff no. I'm I my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> always i know somebody always like Goodness. watching you yeah <laughs> there's like nanny cams everywhere <laughs> <laughs> check all teddy bears and <laughs> check your dog i don't know well you guys tell us what you think about this whole global clarity thing i mean is that something that you ever you know been worried about what did you think of this episode please go to itunes and download our podcast it's free and rate and comment and let us know what you think about the show and how, what you think about how we're doing and if there's anything we missed and all of that you know we really love your comments and all of that so thanks to everyone that's already commented and tweeted you know tweeted me and all of that that they have been watching the show. We really appreciate it. So rate and comment. It helps us out. <laughs> oh, and we also invite calls. Yes. You know, we've, it's been a little quiet. I know. <laughs> I know. So yeah, definitely. And it works too. Yeah. <laughs> See, Kristen is the proof. It works. You can call in and join the conversation. Exactly. So entertainment versus news. This is like the big debate of the show. Yeah. You know, since the beginning, it's been, you know, do they only want to report the news. They mm-hmm. don't want to report entertainment. And, you know, we find out that they lost a lot of the viewers because they did not report on the whole Casey Anthony trial. Mm -hmm. And that's where that whole debate kind of comes in. Is it entertainment? Is it news? Uh, Mac kind of Mm -hmm. considered that entertainment, the Casey Anthony trial. Mm -hmm. I think because of everything that comes with it, you know, and and they analyzed it. Actually, Don kind of (laughs) did a play-by-play. He broke down the whole Nancy Grace. the master of the dark arts. (laughs) <laughs> yes, the master of the dark arts. I yes. love it. <laughs> I love that. So basically, you know, Charlie forces them into having to report on this trial because ultimately they, Will is up for um, the position of hosting a debate mm-hmm. and they want to change the way debates are done. So that's their ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have to kind of bite the bullet and, you know, suck it up and kind of do what the company wants them to do in order to keep their leverage to be able to, you know, secure this debate. Mm-hmm. So, and if they're losing viewers, you know, that's, does it doesn't, doesn't it's help. not going to help them. Right. <laughs> so they need to get those viewers back and, you know, kicking and screaming, they're going to have to report about this at Casey you know, Casey Anthony trial, which that whole thing was insane when it was going on. It was yeah. really, really sad and the focus was kind of lost, I thought, sometimes mm-hmm. on the fact that this was a little kid that was murdered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it did become a circus of, of sorts. Yeah, it just yeah. became like a, you know, like a disgusting reality show and mm-hmm. it was just really, really, really sad and, mm-hmm. you know, but the way that he broke down, you know, Nancy Grace reporting, I thought was, you know, genius mm-hmm. because 
all the clips that they show you to keep it emotional instead of factual. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. You're watching it. You already made up your mind, whatever you thought of this mother, whether you, you know, ultimately thought she was guilty or whatever, it was already, you know, you know what it is. You don't even need to hear the facts. You're looking at the footage. Mm -hmm. They're showing you the duct tape and bags. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've already all, made up your mind. All of the subliminal images they'd put up. Yeah. And, and whether, yeah, whether you thought one way or the other, maybe it was going to skew your... Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, all of us are CSI, you know, <laughs> <I> know. <laughs> yeah. with, with all the it. pictures. There's a bag with duct tape. Yeah, it, it just... It's just interesting how that all kind of plays mm -hmm. out because I think a lot of people maybe even watching the newsroom who didn't necessarily watch the case, or, mm -hmm. you know, 24 hours a day um, may realize, may not have realized that that's what was going on. Right. The imagery and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely about it, though. Most TV shows that, that do so well, you know, people are emotional creatures mostly. And you fall in love with a TV show because of the emotional aspect, you feel a connection to the characters. That's why news doesn't do as well anymore and why other shows do because you find a relatability to it mm -hmm. instead of just having it be logical and you need in certain parts of the newsroom. I think it does great storytelling, but because you like the characters, it makes you want to tune in even more. And the fact they take a Casey Anthony trial that way and they make you feel for the little girl Mm -hmm. That's when I went around the room and everyone was like, I could be a better mother than that. Right. That's why that sells for less of a better term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's when fact, you know, emotion overtakes facts, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter what the truth is. It's, it's how they're, you know, sh visually showing it to you mm -hmm. and making you feel about it. And that's, I think there was a difference in, in different stations reporting it. Mm -hmm. You know, some did try to report only the facts. Some mm -hmm. wanted to take it the, the emotional route. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's also who's watching, who, mm -hmm. like what the audience thinks. So, yeah, I, I think it's nice when a certain audience with a certain view changes the channel just to see the other perspectives as well. Right. And I, but I thought the breakdown of it was, was awesome. And mm -hmm. it, I thought it explained it out, you know, very well. And I mean, Nancy Grace is notorious for that. That's what she does. Whoever produces her show is smart. Yeah. They know how to keep your attention. Yeah. So you don't change the channel. They want to keep your eyes moving and mm -hmm. keep it, you know, keep you visually interested. Yeah, they're like five. Four, yeah. Oh, you're gonna turn. No, let me show you a picture. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let me so I it. mean, <laughs> they know what they're doing over there to keep their viewers. Yeah. And you know that's case in point. And she has a commanding tone as well. Yeah. Grace. She, she's <laughs> always like, picking you fights change with somebody. The channel? <laughs> <laughs> like no, no, man. <laughs> and then we have the whole you know Anthony Weiner situation. Oh goodness. I like how Jim Kristen. runs over there and he's the one to break the story. I don't know why that amused me so much. <laughs> Him to be so, um, Anthony Weiner sent a picture to 40,000 of his Twitter followers. Of his groin. Cracked that. me out because <laughs> it was Jim saying it more than anybody. I, I think, know. I think it would have been funnier if Maggie had done it. No, she was funny. Yeah. Maggie was very serious in this episode. Mm -hmm. I don't. Except when enough. she. She tried except to for um, disappear when everybody nobody wanted to take the phone call. Yeah, Can I disappear? yeah. But usually I look for her for me? my comic relief, and I didn't find it in this show. But that was funny. Very dramatic well that that little part was funny and even yeah, when she yeah. was debating with um jim because mm -hmm. they you know throughout the whole episode you know because again their ultimate goal was to secure this debate mm -hmm. and to change the debate style so throughout the episode we're going back to them researching and having a little bit of a debate mm -hmm. and you know and in the time when she's arguing with jim or not or, but they're debating he's you know He's playing, who was it, uh, Michelle Bachman? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, debating that because, you know, she was quoted as saying that God told her to run for right, office. Right. And as a Christian person, she's like, that's insulting to me. Mm -hmm. Why can't we, you know, why can't the first question be, addressing you know, that. addressing that? Yeah. What does his voice sound like? Right. And the, the point that she made was very interesting to me mm -hmm. because it, I see where she's coming from and it does, it does make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. You know, how is she held at a different standard because she's saying, oh, here, God told me to mm -hmm. do this and not automatically labeled as crazy. But if you question it, then you're insulting all Christians. Mm -hmm. And she almost did that on purpose. It's a mm -hmm. way to say you can't touch this because mm -hmm. it was a message from God. Oh, OK, so no one's going to question that. Yeah, it is. So it was, you know, she's claiming to be this prophet. Right. Which so. is, you know. 
it is insulting to people, you know, the, to the Christian faith and all mm-hmm. of that. In some, in, in a sense, when she's using it like that, mm-hmm. you know, to do that and not, you know, just it's, justify it or talk about, you know, when it's just basically that and not being allowed to question. Right. If she's using it in that way. Yeah. For, if for, if what you know Maggie's argument is yeah. is true to form, then yeah, I can definitely see that. Mm-hmm. But if, if it's something she really you know feels is true, then mm-hmm. then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, off, it's it's you know. always a touchy subject though when you get yeah. into religion. It's mm-hmm. always really touchy and you know, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, I always find it a little frustrating when people are so quick, you know, the whole point is we're supposed to separate church and state, right? Mm-hmm. But when it comes to your benefit, people are so quick to throw the Bible at you. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's really you know, sometimes it can get a little crazy, I think. In politics, When, yes. you know, in politics, when they're yeah. t- kind of taking it to their own benefit, not mm-hmm. necessarily making it come across like this is a true, mm-hmm. you know, kind of faith. But, it, you know, it's always one of those things. It's always going to be a debate. People are always going to get offended in some form or not because it's a very touchy subject. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that they actually, you know. That they addressed that, it. Yeah. Yeah, they it definitely was. That. But the funny part about that is she keeps pointing at Jim yeah. and saying <laughs> she and her. And, and then he's like, can you he's stop doing playing. that? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you wanted to play a woman. Yeah, so that was <laughs> funny. I thought that was really funny. That was funny. So, yeah, so now Mackenzie's, you know, flipping out because now she has to report on these penis pictures. <laughs> and I, I mean, honestly, when that was all going down, I was so not interested in that. So mm-hmm. I didn't really follow it too much. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize that he was, you know, like tweeting out these ridiculous things when he's talking to. I mean, is that true? Like that storyline yeah, when the girl yeah. comes, he was to other people's as well I remember women. actually right when that came out I I found out more about it because I went to a taping of the soup mm-hmm. and that was <laughs> he goes you can't write this stuff that some guy named Anthony Weiner <laughs> tweets pictures of his penis mm-hmm. and I just you know Joe McHale went off on a rant about it which was one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life <laughs> yeah no it's crazy now I get the whole accidentally tweeting the picture out so was mm-hmm. he was he like Twitter me- like messaging pre- you know DMing I, these people and it accidentally went out to all of his followers was that what he was doing because when the girl comes in to, to other people it wasn't just this one picture yeah it, it came into a little bit of a scandal there were people like this girl Sandy that but, were coming out and saying, you know, like when Tiger Woods broke, where all of a sudden you, you have like the first two or three girls, and then all of a sudden there's 15 of them out there. It's yeah. a little bit like that. It was right. sort of like an addiction. He was tweet, you know, engaging Yeah, but that's different... the whole thing is like, was it actually, I thought it was text messages. I didn't no, get no, that it was, it was tweet. Twitter. So he was like DMing these people, and or it was going out and were, out on his Twitter feed. private, and then he made a mistake by uh-huh. doing a public right. one. Right, yeah. okay. And that's how everyone was like, what? Like, oh, why would <laughs> you then, put that on? T- oh. Why do we have this one? I know, it's like DM, or, pri- or you know, crazy. Pu- compose a tweet it's not <laughs> that's ridiculous but that just goes to show how much i was so not into it because when it was all over the news like mm-hmm. i saw like some twitter posts about it but i didn't even really care so i didn't i mean yeah i didn't go deep into the yeah. you know research but I, I do know that they're you know still together and they have a, a baby boy i think that was born recently oh really uh, wiener and his wife and his wife yeah sorry she's mr stand- wiener I she's, got- <laughs> I don't know she's gonna stand by her man right uh i mean and that's the thing i think People were talking about the fact that he didn't physically cheat on her. It was kind of this thing he had mm-hmm. obsession with his body, and and it was like a voyeurism thing. Yeah, right? so, crazy. Yeah. I mean, whatever. <laughs> just <laughs> keep that, you know. Just keep that private. There's right. no need to kind of tell the world about it. But you know, when these girls come out of the woodwork, and you know, all of that, like in the sense with Tiger Woods and with with this, mm-hmm. and to you know, and. I, And the fact that they have agents that help them do that and book Mm -hmm. them on shows. And I don't know what's worse, the fact that they act that they come out and do it or that we entertain it. Like, I don't know. The Sandy girl we're talking about, right? Yeah, but and others like her. How a Sandy girl comes out is that she's using it for her 15 seconds of fame, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's not something to educate anybody. I think mm, that's the issue. More than necessarily reporting it. Because sometimes, I mean... You are hiring somebody like that. Is it somebody that you agree with? And who's to say he's not going to use his new position for something bad? But the fact that, like, this girl, she's not coming out to help other people. She has an agent, and she she goes on camera, and she goes, they're all dressed up, and she's got, like, 50 other outlets. It's not... 
something to inform people as something for her own personal well, benefit, and yeah. that I disagree with. Right, like that's that what I'm saying. Like She feels like it's something that would help people, or people need to be informed because of it. That's a different that's... subject, and I, I would agree with that a little bit more than the fact that she just wants to be on TV. Right, that's well, what that's what I'm saying. Like, like reporting on the story itself, I get, because, mm-hmm. you know, if, if it's somebody we're electing to office and this is the carelessness that he's doing in his own life, how is he going to take care of whatever the office people? he's in? You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I get like, what that. what are his priorities in, right. in office? And if he's, you know, sexting 15 girls' pictures of, of you know, his wiener. Yeah, well, well that's what I'm saying. But, it, like, to, ha- to put these girls on television to make airtime for them, mm-hmm. that's the part that just... You know, well, and that's where I was actually surprised that she, Sandy, made it past the interview mm-hmm. with with uh, Maggie, because mm-hmm. uh, I thought Maggie noticed. Okay, wait, what, first with the receipt. Oh, I have my receipt, as if yeah. she was like Britney Spears or something. And and the latte. Can I get yeah. a latte? She has an agent. <laughs> She's a big fan of Will. Like, yeah, those things. I would have been like, uh, as producer, I would have said, Nah, we don't need her. <laughs> you know, well, it's this, because they had to, because they have to entertain, and this unfortunate, the, the entertainment value of it Mm -hmm. that's what they need to do to get their viewers back which is unfortunate so that's why hesitantly she was like okay but that's what they have to do well and we as we saw maggie was about what 10 people like down the line yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. so she doesn't have much weight in that newsroom right now even though we see her in all the big meetings and stuff Mm -hmm. there are about 10 people above her yeah and so for a new ap to say no to something like that when the EP and the host and, you know, Charlie is all saying we have to cover this. Peggy can't really say no because she's like, not high enough to make that decision. That's the same reason why Sloan didn't get, didn't get her story. Because even though she's smart and it makes sense, she's still not high enough to really be able to... To, to take that story and run with it because it's not her call. It's but not her show. Maybe Maggie could have passed the hot potato on to um, Neil. He's under her, right? And then it could have just been a blog feature or something. Yeah, maybe. But the fact that, that it's really been stressed to them that they have to do. I mean, in the <sighs> meeting. Me. I know, it is. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, like that's the whole thing. Neil ends up on the blog, the, the next thing would be Charlie would probably come in there and be like, hey, why was this girl not put up here? And then Maggie's in more trouble. I mean, she doesn't. The but, poor girl doesn't need any more, you know, mm-hmm. issues on but, the plate. Well, then why didn't they do more research for other women who would have maybe helped the case? Like, you know, help. Because they don't really want to do it anyway. So they're Ugh. basically just kind of <laughs> do the bare minimum to say that they did it. Yeah. And that's what the whole thing is. And that's what this whole debate is, is ha- having, you know, to be a reputable news station. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you where is that line? Do you have to report on this like entertainment side news? How much time do you have to give it? Mm-hmm. I mean, they had to give the Casey Anthony trial 15 minutes plus a five minute recap. It's a lot of airtime. Well, and then, oh, sorry. You know, three minutes for this Anthony, three minutes is a long time. And well, and that was interesting too because Mac was trying to figure out where to put you know, all mm-hmm. of the news and to put, should she put the financial news in between Wiener? And yeah. So, I mean, I think she should have, should have dropped it, but, but I'm yeah. not the uh, producer. But then I thought that was also interesting that Will said, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Because mm-hmm. I thought that was also symbolic of, you know, his feelings about Brian and mm-hmm. and Mac. I don't know if you guys saw that. Oh, could be. In that, you know, like, yeah. well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. You know, you, you figured always... out everything else. Like, right. you know, <laughs> take <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Definitely. So that was just a sidebar. Yeah, Sorry. but I mean, Sloane's story, you know, she was fighting really hard because the story that she wants to tell is news. Mm-hmm. It's important news. And to have to cut that in order to report on somebody sending penis pictures on the Internet, like, who mm-hmm. cares? Right. You know, yeah. that is what the whole struggle is, basically, mm-hmm. is, you know, do I have to report this? I can't tell you, you know, what's really going on that's going to, inf- you know, impact like almost mm-hmm. like the way that, you know, our our way of life and all of this with the debt that we're in as a country and mm-hmm. all of that. No, I can't really tell, talk to you about that because mm-hmm. I have to talk to you about, about somebody's penis right, pictures, right. you know, and it's. Well, and then the weather got bumped. Yeah. The all important <laughs> yeah. weather. Well, then, you <laughs> know, in true, you know, they really didn't want to have to do this interview, pre-tape this interview with this person mm-hmm. talking about you know, this other woman that, you know, Anthony Weiner was messing around with, and then boom, it's a blackout. Right. You know, and, so and Mackenzie goes, God, please give me a sign I'm not <laughs> doing a bad thing, you know. And yeah. Then, yeah, power goes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
get some humor there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect timing. Tragedy porn. Yeah, perfect Insert timing. Here. Yeah. I don't know. All in all, I mean, that's basically what the whole thing is about and what we learned from this show is, you know, the entertainment news versus, you know, actual like news hard news, news yeah. hard news. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, well, we'll see how it goes from here. <laughs> well, it's funny, too, because a Casey Anthony trial, when, when I think of entertainment news, I think more, you know, E or Access Hollywood, Entertainment Tonight and mm -hmm. all of that. But a Casey Anthony trial doesn't really fit into that category either because I think those should focus more on Hollywood, you know. Mm -hmm. And But yet the hard news it's not exactly hard news either. So where does it end up going? Right. Maybe it well, overlaps, right? A little bit. Because I used to see um, Casey Anthony being reported on mm -hmm. Access Hollywood. I extra. mean, and it was a child well, every, that was murdered. Everybody takes a bite out of something that, yeah. mm -hmm. that everyone wants. Yeah. But that's the thing, too, is like it was it's a murder trial. It's a child that was mm -hmm. murdered, you know, possibly by her mother. So, I mean, I can see how that can go as hard news, but it's all in the way that they're reporting mm -hmm. it. You know, mm -hmm. not necessarily just facing like, you know, focusing on the trial facts. No, they're mm -hmm. digging into her life and, mm -hmm. you know, do talking about her as if she was like a reality star mm -hmm. and and it wasn't just like following a trial mm -hmm. so well, that you know the, the entertainment 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 shows would mm -hmm. talk about things with that slant with the entertainment mm -hmm. slant you know oh she's being offered money for a reality show or yeah this is what she thinks of kim yeah. kardashian cause yeah she's and tweeting then they about add her and, yeah they add that whole thing so i don't know yeah. but you know but that's what we're seeing here and that's what you know they're trying to kind of depict in the show is you know how we're given our information so yeah. it's always going to be interesting i can't wait for the next two episodes and to see what happens and see if we'll <laughs> really get fired i don't know but let's get into some news and gossip and we'll do predictions after buzz tv news in the news <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got what do you got um i have a few stories one oh kristen sorry do you have anything Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, one of the things I found out was that President Barack Obama was giving props to Aaron Sorkin. Um, he was at a fundraiser and, and said that Aaron Sorkin writes the way every Democrat in Washington wished they spoke. Um, Aaron, thank you. That's what, that's what the direct quote was. So I nice. thought that was something nice to, to share. And then in other news, I know the debate was on or off about uh, there being another Dumb and Dumber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can never say yep. it. Oh, you were going to say that? That's, that's what I was reading mostly, the stuff like that. But oh, okay. I still hope for it. Yeah, um, so they say that it's it's actually in development and that um, Jim is down to do it, and I think Jeff is too. So I guess keep your eyes open in 2013. Ooh, that could be funny. That's, oh, that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be funny to, you know, kind of think of Jeff Daniels yeah. as Will and then to go back into Go the back comedy. to that right yeah. now. <laughs> I, would, I'm, I wonder what that storyline, what that whole story is going to be. Where I, You know, where is it going to pick up from? Yeah, so That's going to be interesting. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else? Uh, no, Kristen, did you have something? No, I was just—I saw a couple of um, articles about Dumb and Dumber as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> same page. Same page. <laughs> We're just keeping our fingers crossed for another Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into some predictions and see what we think is going to happen next. And now your After Buzz TV predictions. What do you think, Kristen? I'm, I'm really like the preview. I'll just comment on the fact that we're going to see a little, again, as you guys know, I, I like Jim and Maggie and Don and all of that. And like, mm. The preview from last week had me hoping for a little bit more of that. And then apparently that, that wasn't this past episode. It'll be one later on. And I'm kind of interested to see how that's explored. Cause, you know, and then Don keeps just showing up for everything. They're hiring him to, to help out with their news. And I think that'll be... Um, I think the next episode seems to go back and forth between personal and then news. Mm -hmm. We had a really newsy one this week, so I think next week we'll go back to all the the, the personal aspect of the yeah. show. And um, I'm kind of interested to see what they do with the um, debate for the Republican primary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They seem to be saw all of them in a row. What it looks like T-shirts with names on them. Yeah, because they're they're, they're debate that way. I want to see how they run with the debate. So mm -hmm. I want to see Will and his with his lawyer background kind of in his element. Prosecuted. Yeah, that'll be, what about you, Kendra? Um, yeah, I, I'm interested in the whole Don, Jim, Maggie, every, you know, mm -hmm. that whole, and the Lisa, the square. Mm -hmm. um, 
because they did show that preview twice in you know twice in a row last yeah. week. So we were waiting for it this week. Um, I think I also want to see what's going to happen with Brian and Mac. Mm-hmm. I think something might stir up with that, and it may drive Will to uh, <laughs> continue to chain smoke. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You think she'll know. you know have one too many martinis at the bar with Sloan, and then all of a sudden oh. it's going to be her and Brian all oh, over again? Oh, gosh. <laughs> or maybe, well, no. I was going to say Sloan and Brian. Sloan thought he was cute. Yeah. yeah. So maybe I don't know. Or maybe, maybe Neil and Sloan. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. After all of that, you know. Yeah, after all tension. of that. Because <laughs> he told her she had a big butt. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, like, a like, a lot of what? guys like that. <laughs> She's that like, really do they? Funny, although I thought it was a little much her pushing him up against the get- against the wall but i thought that was hilarious yeah Yeah. well she's so socially awkward we know this so you know that i think it fit well with her character because she's (laughs) crazy anyway when it comes (laughs) to those sort of things that's really funny. What do you think? I don't know. I think that, you know, I definitely think Brian's going to stir some, you know, kind of emotions back up. And, yeah. you know, because it, it looks like from the preview that he keeps kind of taunting Mackenzie with, you know, he does, you know, Will doesn't want you. I mm-hmm. asked you back. You yeah. know, he didn't. You know, here's the deal. So I don't know if maybe, you know, he actually does want something more with her or if he just kind of wants to get back and playing this whole game thing. Yeah. So we'll maybe see. he'll play that you know for the fact you know getting yeah. the story yeah somehow. it could be yeah just to know. get more information for his story yeah. too you know it's really hard trust to trust yeah. trust those journalists <laughs> when they're writing about you i don't know right. so that'll be interesting to see and the whole you know don and jim and maggie you know situation that uh-huh. we love and yeah. you know good for lisa saying she doesn't want to be anybody's second, second choice. choice so i think they're just going to go to being friends like you know yeah. we had talked about before and i don't think jim's her, Maggie's second choice, I think, in her head. Yeah, choice, but so. she already had a boyfriend, so. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, I don't know. We'll see. Lots of good they stuff coming up. They have a lot to up. pack into two episodes. I yeah. know. I know. Maybe two more like episodes. I don't know. Easy. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us. And, Maggie, you can always follow us at AfterBuzz TV on Twitter and also on Facebook. And you can follow me at Kelly with an IE 079. And me at Kendra. Cav- at Kendra Cavasel, K E N D R A K A V A S E L E. And we will see you guys next week. Thanks so much. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Afterbuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the Afterbuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterbuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.